Hello there, I'm Leo Waldock for Kick Guru, and this is the Cyberpower Fangbook Edge 4K laptop. Uh, I'm going to open up by saying I'm not mad keen on the name, uh, but anyway, Cyberpower make Fangbook Edge is a range of laptops, 4K. It's the screen, let's face it, that's a fairly obvious clue. Uh, a basic, if there is such a thing, Fangbook Edge will set you back £1,170. Add in the uh, 4K panel, adds £90 to the price. You're looking at the precise figure is 1264.80 in Kavat and delivery. In round money, £1,265. Uh, the actual laptop itself is fundamentally a Core i7 powered by um, NVIDIA GTX 970M graphics with a bunch of memory. Uh, so it's a gaming laptop with a high res display uh, and that's all lovely. Let's take a quick tour around it and I'll show you some of the features. On this side of the laptop you can see a couple of USB 3 ports and also the headset jacks as well as the point to connect the power brick which incidentally is a 150 watt power brick so that's fairly hefty without being absolutely ginormous. And then on the other side we have uh, an SD card reader, uh, a USB 3 and also Ethernet. So basically all you'd expect to see, there's nothing on the back of it and nothing on the front. Uh, no optical drive. This is a slimline laptop, only measures 20mm in thickness. Uh, and as you can see it's fully specced. So the 4K display is the big feature. Um, inside uh, there is a slight curiosity which is that CyberPower has opted for a 2.5-inch, uh, 1TB hard drive which only rotates at 5400rpm, so it's not a performance hard drive at that. Uh, the drive inside this particular laptop is Seagate. Now the thing is, this chassis can actually accommodate a pair of M.2 SSDs. You may not necessarily be familiar with M.2, uh, one of those. M.2 is not a lockdown standard, so they vary in size. In fact, they can vary in shape. They don't necessarily have to be rectangular. So you have the contacts along this edge here, uh, and then you get a number of chips. There'll be more chips under that sticker. Uh, now, as it happens, uh, smaller M.2s can be about that size, which um, is familiar to you if you've looked at a, a wireless network card recently. 8211AC cards, for example, will look almost exactly like that, uh, with a couple of uh, connection points and antennae. So the thing is that inside this laptop chassis, there are two uh, points where you can put in M.2 SSDs. Uh, and you could, if you choose, pay £100 for a Kingston SSD now uh, M.2, which would be rated at 240 gigabytes. Now, I wouldn't personally want this laptop with a 240 gig drive. It's a bit on the small side. However, I'm very happy to have it uh, booting off the uh, M.2 and also put my uh, games and such like on there. Uh, and then have the one terabyte drive for all the usual storage, you know, movies and videos and uh, TV and such like, uh, and also photos. Um, it's bumping up the price a little, uh, but the thing is that the response uh, of a laptop when it's running on SSD rather than on a hard drive, it's just epic to behold. And this laptop, it's not slow, not by a long chalk, but it notably is uh, slow when you start up. On the other hand, shut the lid down and open it up, it, it goes to sleep and wakes quite quickly. But uh, apart from this, I don't like the idea that all my stuff is on hard drive because hard drives, you know, they're prone to shock damage. So SSD for me, thank you very much. On the other hand, it's a bit luxurious to have two M.2 SSDs. That's money, plus you are losing out on storage. So one terabyte hard drive by all means, but let's whop in a, a 256 gigabyte SSD while we're at it. Thank you, chaps. So the panel, the 4K panel. Now, this test mode, um, it's a bit annoying. The reason for it is that uh, CyberPower ships these laptops for review with some uh, little routine running to stop getting a nag screen to activate Windows when manufacturers send out uh, PCs and laptops. They don't want to pay a license for Windows every single time, which is going to be scrapped as soon as it gets back to base. So very often you get the nag screen saying activate, activate, and you just don't. In this instance, they've got this overlay. Uh, which prevents the nag screen. So that's quite nice. On the other hand, it doesn't look great. But on the downside, it means that testing software can't grab the focus in Windows because this little routine has the focus. So um, I could run 3D Mark and I got the uh, scores for the components. However, I don't get an overall result because 3D Mark goes, ah, you're running in a window. You're not quite playing by the game, by the rules, old chap. And uh, Hence, it doesn't deliver an overall result. Slightly annoying. Anyway, the panel, it looks glorious. And in Windows 8.1, the um, 
4K display scales beautifully. The icons and such like work really well. I'm happy with the look of it. The viewing angle is fine. It's not brilliant. The coating is fine. As you can probably see, it's a little on the shiny side, but not mad. Um, on the other hand, you haven't got that whole kind of lustrous thing going on either. It's, it's in the middle. Uh, as, as displays go, I'm happy with it. It's not the best I've ever seen in my life, but it's certainly way, way, way above the, above the worst. So happy. So 4K, heaps of pixels. Is it Retina Display? No, it's not. Um, the figures I have from CyberPower's tech bloke are that to call it Retina Display, they'd want to have over 477 DPI. That's a very precise number. Um, slightly strange to me because how large a panel is, how many pixels it has, and uh, how far away you hold it from you makes a big difference as to whether a thing is for uh, whether a thing is Retina or not. Obviously, a phone or a tablet you hold it very close to you. A laptop is going to be here, but it could be as far as it is from me at this moment. Anyway, they're, they're saying if it's 477 DPI, they'd call it Retina. This, in fact, is 282, which is double the DPI of a regular full HD display. There you're down to the 140. Um, I have to say that no matter how close I get to this display, I cannot see the individual pixels. So to my mind, it is effectively a Retina display, even though it is not. It's a good panel, and the scaling of Windows 8.1 works really well. There's one quirk of this panel, which is that we're, we've seen with various of the 28-inch 4K displays on the market from the likes of Dell, Acer, Asus, AOC and others that uh, they either have a 30 hertz or 60 hertz refresh rate. 30 hertz is an absolute lemon. Dell did that because it's something to do with HDMI. Um, the other manufacturers have opted for DisplayPort to give a 60 hertz connection. That's fine. This panel, 48 hertz, which is a bit of an oddball. Um, now, I have to say, in regular use, you don't notice that it's less than 60 hertz. Um, and my guess is 48 hertz is something to do with 24 FPS is for movie playback. It's something like double that, but it's a strange number I've not come across before. Apparently, it's to do with the connection within this chassis to the panel. So that's where the 48 hertz figure is. Um, it didn't actually matter during my testing at all. However, when I was doing Tomb Raider, running the benchmark in that, at 1080 I could do what I liked. When I went to 4K, if I disabled V-Sync, uh, the thing would crash. Re-enable V-Sync in 4K, it was fine. So clearly manufacturers and games companies, they're still sorting out their 4K settings, not unreasonably. This is, in a, in a sense, cutting edge. Um, 4K is still very thin on the ground. Uh, so it works, it looks good. Clearly you want super duper um, high HD content to get the best from this panel. So what do you get when you ally an Intel Core i7 that turbos up to 3.7 gigahertz along with an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970M graphics chip and a 4K panel? And the answer obviously is as much performance as you can uh, ask for. Um, there's 16 gigabytes of DDR3L memory inside there as well. Uh, now the thing is those extra pixels, they do affect the performance. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the numbers uh, because they'll be on the KitGuru webpage along with graphs and such like. But to take a for instance, if we go into Thief, we look at average frames per second. This is a high preset at 1080, 58.3 FPS, which is absolutely what you'd expect to see. On the other hand, at 4K, 21.1 FPS. So you've really got that. Do you go at 4K, suffer a slightly low frame rate, or do you go at 4K, drop the quality a tad from high down to perhaps medium? or do you go for 1080 and bump up the quality and go for high or even whatever it is, ultra I think comes above high. Uh, in other words, this laptop does not have the grunt to play games at any settings you want at 4K. That's just asking too much of the hardware, but then there's a heck of a lot of pixels. On the other hand, if you're playing back movies at 4K, you've got those uh, GoPro uh, Hero 4 is 4K now, isn't it? And there are various uh, fancy DSLRs on the market that do 4K, Panasonic uh, GH4, for example. Uh, so playing back 4K video, no problem whatsoever. If you want to play games at 4K, you're going to have a decision or two to make because this does not have all the grunt in the world to do that. On the other hand, I'm not quite clear there's any laptop that does at the moment. And even if they did, I'm sure the drivers would misbehave because 4K is new, new, new. So it does 4K, depending on what you're doing with your 4K, you're going to have a decision or two to make. Anyway, the pricing, as I said back at the uh, start, 
It's 12.65 ink, vat and delivery, and to my mind that's too cheap because you need to budget another 100 pounds from M.2 uh, SSD to boot off, which will give you more storage as well as it happens. Um, if you're feeling really wealthy, go for a couple of M.2s, so you'll be adding 200 pounds, you're nearly at 1500 pounds then, and dump the HDD altogether, but uh, I don't know. Or of course you could replace the HDD with a 2.5 inch SSD, that would work. You've got decisions, you've got options there. Anyway, um, 12.65, theoretically, I'm going to say not because you should have an SSD of some form in there, in which case you add £100, 1350 ish um, perhaps a tad more than that. It's a nice laptop, it's good, it's thinnish, it's lightish, it looks good, the screen, I like it. Uh, there is the question if you're not going to do anything with 4K in the near future, do you need 4K or do you hang fire and wait till it's uh, more common? Um, there's every reason to jump now if you're buying a new laptop. Yes, push the boat out a bit higher than you might otherwise go. 1080 obviously works. 4K, it's a bit of luxury. Anyway, this is Leo Waldock for Kit Guru, and this is the Fangbook Edge 4K.